Donkey Kong is a classic Nintendo character, and he has been one of, if not my favorite video game character for a very long time. So naturally, I want the tie-wearing gorilla to succeed and persevere amidst Nintendo's vast catalog of IPs, lest he become a forgotten relic of the past like Star Fox or F-Zero. However, as a standalone property, Donkey Kong has had a very mixed history. What began as a basic arcade game transformed into a strange yet long-standing franchise comprised of multiple series and spin-offs of varying quality. Unlike other premier franchises such as Mario or Zelda, Donkey Kong seems to lack a separate and distinct identity compared to many of Nintendo's other IPs, and because of that, the company tends to utilize it for their more experimental purposes. However, easily the most recognizable and popular series to come from the Big Ape has been the acclaimed Donkey Kong Country series. This seems to suggest that audiences value Donkey Kong as a platformer game more than anything else. And while the DKC series has been supported for years by fans, I think it's about time there was another attempt to bring Donkey Kong into the third dimension. And that brings us to the primary topic for today. Of course, the one and only time we got a 3D platformer from the franchise was Donkey Kong 64, which has since gone down in infamy as a premier example of a failure at the genre. But I believe it is a legacy that can be mended if handled correctly, and the way to do that is to examine what worked so well about Donkey Kong Country, and repurpose some of those ideas in 3D, while avoiding what didn't work about DK64. So join me as we take another swing at conceptualizing a new 3D Donkey Kong game. First, we need to lay down the groundwork for the game. The game will be a 3D platformer collectathon like DK64. Players will explore a variety of sandbox-style levels using Donkey Kong's acrobatic abilities, while searching for collectibles which allow access to subsequent levels. Unlike DK64, however, DK is the only real playable character, and there are far fewer collectibles in comparison. The story is pretty simple. A new baddie arrives to invade DK Island, capturing many of DK's monkey friends and stealing his banana hoard, including his most prized possession, the Silver Banana. Once again, Donkey Kong goes on a quest to rescue his friends, reclaim his banana hoard, and take revenge on the bad guys while he's at it. The first four levels require DK to rescue his monkey friends from imprisonment, just like DK64. Donkey Kong has most of his signature moves from Donkey Kong Country. He can roll in short bursts, grab, carry, and throw various objects, climb, swing, and pound. Also carried over from DKC are his monkey friends who improve and expand his abilities, such as allowing him to roll indefinitely. These friends are Diddy, Dixie, Kitty, and Cranky Kong. Only one can be active at a time. However, they can be freely switched between at any point once unlocked, simply by pressing the corresponding direction on the D-pad. If the player takes too much damage, they will leave and must be recollected at barrels or checkpoints. Each has their own unique platforming ability, most of which are carried over from DKC Tropical Freeze. Diddy's jetpack can slow DK's descent while falling, Dixie's ponytail can give DK a slight upward boost after jumping, Cranky can use his cane as a pogo stick to repeatedly bounce and avoid hazardous floors, and Kitty can be thrown and recalled to DK an unlimited amount of times, acting as a permanent barrel, so to speak. Level design is substantially different from DK64. Instead of large, sprawling areas, we have compact and interactive environments which focus on Donkey Kong's abilities. There are plenty of things to pound, climb, and swing on creating a great sense of speed and athleticism as players explore the level. Many objects can be grabbed, carried, and thrown to affect things in the level, such as levers which activate machinery, or barrels that can be thrown to smash targets. Levels also feature iconic elements like cannons, minecarts, rails, rockets, and balloons to traverse certain areas of a level. Each level has one animal buddy that can be unlocked to offer a change of pace and to make certain areas easier. These include characters like Rambi, Enguard, Winky, Helper Monkeys, Squitter, Ratley, Expresso, and a small handful of new animal buddies. Enguard can swim faster than DK, Expresso can run faster, and so on. As previously mentioned, there are overall fewer types of collectibles in the game. But given the smaller and simpler level design, 
players will still constantly be finding collectibles with different purposes. The main collectible will be either golden bananas or some other kind of special fruit, and these are required to progress through the game. The most common collectibles are once again regular bananas, and these are placed everywhere to entice players to every part of the level. Bananas function both as currency for Funky's shop and as health replenishment for DK. At the shop, they can be used to purchase one golden banana per level. Squawks, who temporarily accompanies DK and senses if rare collectibles are nearby, and one specific animal buddy per level. After some time, bananas respawn with a transparent texture to differentiate from those that have not been collected. Each level has a set number of music tracks that can be collected and played on a portable stereo which DK and friends will dance to. DK coins are a limited collectible which can also be used to purchase various things at Funky's shop including one golden banana per level, one key per level, which are collectively used to unlock a bonus level, one music track, and many different cosmetic changes for DK and friends. Lastly, the rarest collectibles are called treasures, and they consist of little relics and tokens which reference Donkey Kong's past, such as King K. Rule's crown, the bongos from Donkey Konga, the banana cake from Tropical Freeze, etc. These treasures are displayed in DK's house as a sort of trophy room. At the end of the game, DK eats the silver banana, turning him into Super Kong. Super Kong has every ability from the other Kongs combined, sort of like Tropical Freeze's funky mode, and this can be toggled on and off in the pause menu. The Donkey Kong franchise is beloved by many fans, myself included, and we have been overdue for a proper big budget title like this for a while now. This new 3D platformer game aims not only to rectify the mistakes and shortcomings of the series' past, but to establish Donkey Kong as an important, high-quality IP for Nintendo. It may not be the most unique platformer, but the DKC series proves that whatever Donkey Kong lacked in originality, it made up for in quality game design, arguably surpassing even Mario's 2D adventures. And I believe that with this new hypothetical game, or something close to it, Donkey Kong has the potential to achieve similar success in the third dimension, so here's hoping that someday Nintendo will commit the time, creativity, and talent to make this game a reality, and give the big ape a much needed second chance.